Lord, we'd like to thank you for another day. Lord, we'd like to thank you for health and strength. Lord, we'd like to thank you for just looking over us and our family. Lord, we'd like to thank you for everything that you're doing and everything that you're going to do. Lord, we'd like to ask you to bless the service today on Sunday. Lord, we'd like to ask you to just bless the choir as we sing. The praise team as we go, as they go forward. Lord, we ask you to um, pray for our district missionary. We ask you, Lord, to touch her body from head to toe, Lord. And Lord, we just come to you again. The speaker for today, Lord, give her the right words to say and to minister to your people on Fifth Sunday. And Lord, we just ask you for anything that we have done to um, each other, Lord, we just ask you to just forgive us and let them forgive us because the Sunday school lesson was about God's forgiveness. And Lord, we need to learn how to forgive and just forgive people for anything they've done to us or we have done to them. Lord, we ask you for your prayers today, for anybody that's in that's sick or um, just anybody that's going through, Lord, we just ask you just to move on their behalf and just bless them in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for everything that you've done. Lord, we just clap our hands. We just clap our hands in the name of Jesus. Let's be a part of this 
Let's get ready to receive. Let's get ready to receive whatever it is that's on your heart that you need to pull out to God. Amen. Let's get up here and really focus. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 It is now time for altar prayer. Amen. We're asking that everyone gets settled. Amen. We want to make sure that when we make this connection with God, that there are no other distractions. Amen. The walking and the talking and all that other good stuff is fine. But the time now is time for prayer. Amen. We want to make sure that we make a genuine connection with the Father. Amen. We want to make sure that we can break through the clouds of heaven, break through this roof, and make the connection with God. Amen. Amen. This is the time where we bring all of our burdens, all of our needs to him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And now that you just get your mind set on Jesus, get your mind set on Jesus. He's a wonderful Savior. He bled and died for you. Your sin debt has been paid. It's been paid in full. And we love and we thank and we glorify our Savior for sending his wonderful love to us day in and day out his protection he always makes a way out of no way sister ebony thompson can you just sing a little bit of that for us this morning i love you so much Begin to close your eyes and lift your hands. Come on, let's be obedient. Let's close our hands and lift our hands. Lift your hands. This is a sign of surrenderance. Amen. This is a sign of surrenderance. You've been so faithful to me. So merciful. up a little bit so say something sweet to the father now you're a wonderful god you're the orchestra and finisher of our faith god when i don't have any words all i can say is just oh but i'm gonna say it with my heart and my soul and my spirit i'm grateful if you are grateful, I just want you to begin to open your mouth and give God praise now. If you're grateful for your life, you're grateful for the activities of your limbs, you're grateful for the breath of life, you're grateful, you're grateful, I'm grateful, God. But I have nothing else to say. And all I can say is just, oh, I'm grateful. Thank you, God. God, before we ask for anything on today, we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues, it would not be enough to tell your name thank you. So we're saying it now. We're saying thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. 
We're saying thank you for waking us up this morning. A lot of individuals did not wake up to see this bright new day, but we woke up, God, and we're saying thank you. We know sometimes we take it for granted, but right now, God, our souls are saying thank you. Our spirits are saying thank you, and our hearts are saying thank you. Thank you for starting us on our way, God. You allowed us to make it to your sanctuary one more time, and we say thank you. You kept your angels of protection around us, God, on the dangerous highways and byways, God. You didn't let that car hit us, God, and we say thank you. You allowed us not to be present when the shooting happened, and we say thank you, God. We just say thank you. God, we thank you for the breath of life, to be able to shout hallelujah, and to be able to give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory that you so rightfully deserve. We say thank you, God. We say thank you. God, we thank you for what you're doing right now. God, we thank you for what you're doing right now at this exact moment. You're breaking the chains. You're healing now. You're delivering now. And you're setting free now. And we say thank you. Thank you for breaking the chains, God. And setting us free. We thank you for freedom. We thank you that we can be free in you, God. Because you have delivered us from bondage. You have delivered us from being in slavery, God. All those many years in the past, God. But now we can walk around with our heads held high because you have given us freedom. Freedom of speech, God. Freedom. We thank you, God. God, we thank you for what you're going to do in the future, God. We may not see it just yet, but by faith, we believe that it's already done. Whatever we're asking of you, God, we believe that it's already done. Now, God, we're asking that you meet every need on this altar on today. Meet every need on this altar, God. Whatever the people are crying out to you, God, we're asking that you meet it, God. Only by your power can you do it. Only by your power can we do it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, right now, God, we're asking that you have your way. We're asking that you have your way, God. Touch right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, God. Oh, touch their hearts, God. Those of, those of us that have a stone heart, God, we're asking that you break it and you let love seep in. You let healing seep in now. Heal the bodies, God. Heal the minds, God. Allow us to come together and have a mind to do your will, God. And have a mind to let the world know that holiness is still right. And we are going to live as the epitome of holiness, God. Now, God, allow us to be an oracle of Christ and not of man. Let them see us. Let your son's light shine through us, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, we're asking that you touch and anoint our leader, Superintendent William Marie from and the leader of our women's department, District Missionary Kenita Smith. We're asking that you touch them from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. We're asking that you give them wisdom, God. We're asking that you give them power, God. And we're asking that you give them strength. And right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we say, God, send your healing to our leader. Send your healing to our leaders, God. Send your healing to our leaders, God. Heal right now. Touch them, God. From the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet. They need you, God. We need you, God. We need you, God. We need you, God. We need you to move by your power. We need you to move by your spirit. We need you to move by your anointing. Now, Holy Ghost, come in like a fresh wind. Let us be saved, set free, and delivered, God. God, we're asking that you instill back in us our joy, God. Instill back into us our happiness, God. Because there's nothing wrong with being happy in you, Father. Now, God, if you do all these things, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that you so rightfully deserve. 
By the clapping of our hands, we say thank you. By the clapping of our hands, we say thank you. By the clapping of our hands, we give you praise. By the clapping of our hands, we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty and merciful, matchless name, we do pray. Let everyone say amen. Go back to your seats, giving God praise.
July, Jaden and I, we traveled to Texas to be able to, for him to try out for these camps, um, USA football team camps. And so this was bigger, I'm like, Nick and Alan and I were gonna be navigating a world that I'm not so much familiar with, but um, I do have a cousin who's former NFL, so I reached out to him and, and you know, kind of ran some things through him and just said, I just need your support, prayers. So all the logistics were taken care of, free logistics, 4th of July weekend. My brother, he Ubers us, takes us to the airport to fly out. We're checking in our luggage, right? Luggage gets checked in, we make our way through the Denver airport. Flight was nice and beautiful. We land in Texas. And it was a late land. Everybody gets off our plane. The airport's kind of like, especially the airline, is kind of, you know, quiet. We go to our baggage claim. And guess what doesn't show up? one of Jaden's luggage. Not only was it just one, it was the one. Because most athletes are more comfortable in their own stuff, so it was all in his padding that's fitted for his body. And so, we weren't the only ones who lost luggage. I'm gonna put it out there. Well, it wasn't lost, but it was delayed. So thank goodness, a young man walking through, 
And we're like, we sit here and we don't have luggage and it was me and five other people. One lady was a young lady, she had two toddlers, lost all their luggage. Oh. Two other men had their, one had a surfboard, the other one had golf equipment, so they were like, you know, and so we were trying to maintain and, and then next thing you know, so that guy, he calls, he's like, get everything off of that plane. And then next thing you know, surfboard comes through, golf clubs come through, no football equipment, right? So I'm doing a manual claim. I told the young man, thank you so much. I appreciate your patience. Looks like we're trying to get off. Da, da, da. So he tells all the paperwork. He tells me, ma'am, call this number tomorrow. This is kind of how our airline works. This is the times you call. Only two flights a day, right? So thank God I had the wisdom to travel early, number one, because um, just to navigate the city and for him to get rest to the early start. So I said, well, all right, we're going to go to the hotel. I said, you know, Jamie, this is the worst that happens. I can do this. This is good. This is good to work. Uber to the hotel. And the woman we got in the car with, you know, she's asking where we're from. It's our first time here. Yes, yes, yes. And she and Jamie was like, yeah, well, our flight was good, but one of my luggage, my football equipment didn't come. And she said, well, you know, I don't know if you guys are Christians, but I feel like you are. And I'm, I'm just confident, and I believe that God is going to show you all favor in this. And she was like, you know, he's telling her what his, you know, position is, and and she's just talking faith as we go, and what she does. Come to find out, she's a part of professional athletes there too, and so they made a good connection about some new uh, recovery for athletes for their body. So he was very intrigued, and she got out. And she's like, don't you all worry about it. I know it's easier to say, but I'm praying for you, and I know God's gonna work all this out. So we're like, yes, God, let's work it out. We get to the hotel. I get ready to check in. My payment was not received, accepted, whatever. And I was like, huh, wait, what, wait a minute. And I set aside to be able to travel possible. That's what my mama taught me, right? So I'm like, that's not right. So I'm calling the company. I'm calling mom to see if I could use her uh, rewards, and none of it could be used. So now I'm like, oh, and Jamie's working hard. He's hanging in there in the lobby. Like, he's holding on, holding on. I'm making phone calls. Somebody says, check your other account. So I check my other account, and I said, oh, I've done, baby. Globally, I can move stuff. So I moved things around, and I said, Lord, if you can just cover one night, then we'll be okay. The lady, she was new that night, and even she was like, you know what, we're going to pray. She was calling her manager, all her, all of them, to try to get things working for me. And she said, we're just going to pray, and I believe God's going to work this out. And I was like, God's going to work it out. So I was able to cover one night. Got that one night covered. In the meantime, I was waiting for the money to transfer. This lady comes down, and she's like, hunched over. And I'm like, are you okay? She's like, oh, I got bad heartburn. And Jay's like, I know you're not supposed to give her heartburn. She was like, he was like, please, Lord. I was like, well, I have some. You don't have to give me that. Thank you. And so he was like, go through all your medicine. Lord, you need to let us know. And if we help us on the Lord, I know you're going to give us some right here. You bless us, right? So I found so I got the key. Thank you. She's like, yeah, baby. Thank you, God. Right? And then she walks off the field and goes, hey, amen. Then everything goes to her room. She tells me, I'm going to put you in a room tonight, but would you be willing to move? You know, the next day? I said, yeah. So she upgraded us to a suite. So we slept through that whole like first day, made sure he had rest and everything. And he was a little bothered. In the midst of that, I'm telling you, I called every chain of command. I turned every rock to get this luggage here prior to starting his camp. I was up 24 hours making phone calls. They only had two flights coming in. And I called when I was supposed to call. And I finally, the day came. And Jamie, he came in, he's like, did you get my luggage? I said, couldn't, no one's calling me back. Finally, that morning came and I said, Jaden, I know that it's your stuff and you want it. But this is praying time. We have to exercise our faith. You have to believe, you have to believe that God's gonna work out for you. You have to leave it all on that field today. Get past your stuff. As soon as I get you checked in, I'm going to go to the airport, because I had already had it planned to go to the airport, but my expectation was that they would do their customer service job. So I said, I'm going to get you checked in. I pulled them to the side, amen, and the organizers, and I told them our situation, and she said, don't worry about it. We'll get Jayden everything he needs, ma'am. And I said, thank you. I appreciate that. He got his helmet fitted. And then I said, listen, you're checked in. Make sure you go to your workshop. I'm going to go to the airport. I had to Uber back to the airport to get his luggage. Walked up there. In the meantime, when I was sending text messages, lo and behold, the Uber driver 
which is interesting because he was uh, uh, Arabic, Arabian. He started saying, well, I just believe that for some, there's something about you. You must be a Christian. And he said, not that I'm not, but I'm praying for you and your son that everything's going to be okay when you walk out that airport. And I said, please pray. His wife called. She said she was going to pray. And so his sister called. She said she was praying. Right? And I was like, all right. You know. I get a phone call, a text message. It says, Ms. Blackwell, this is such and such. You text me. I got your text message. I don't work for the airline anymore. Call this person. This is the new supervisor. I called him as we're pulling up. And he says, Ms. Ms. Blackwell, go into the airport and tell me who you see. And I was describing people. And I, there was a young man. He had dark hair. He said, go up to him. Tell him, because I'm off, but that you're talking to his supervisor. And for you, for him to go back there and see that you wouldn't see if you can identify your piece of luggage. So I introduced myself, telling the supervisor said to do this. We go back there, and guess what's there? Luggage. His luggage. Yeah. And at that point, I was like, you know what? My empathy tank, I felt like it was really low. And I had told the young man, he said, ma'am, we're short staffed, and I had to take a day off because my father is really ill. We weren't aware of it. I had to rush him to the hospital. And I said, can I pray with you? Because the situation that you're in, I've been through. So I prayed with him. Then I got my luggage and I had to Uber back to Jaden right before they were taking the field. And when I sent him a text and said, look what I found, he was like, my luggage. But I got there and he was such in good spirits and he had already made friends and he was ready to go. And I told him, I said, we're going to keep praying. We're just going to keep praying. There were at least four to 600 athletes there. In his position, there were about 35. Now, he's a part of the top elite athletes, okay? And so he's competing with 30 other people for his position, but yet, better yet, 399 other young men who want the same thing. Between heat exhaustion and getting him set up in the dorms, I mean, he had a busy schedule. I did not see him. But I was at that field every day, making sure he had what he needed. And he played hard. I went through all the rotations. I met friends. People were praying for me. Long story short, I told him, I said, you know what? At the beginning of all this, I said, we've been through too much hell. You've been through too much hell. Just getting here. The devil is trying to keep you from being successful. But you have got to believe. And he has a beautiful playlist that's all gospel music. He has developed a relationship with God. And I said, this is a test of your faith. And my faith too. I believe what you have got to believe. We found out Thursday that he got accepted. And he's going to be playing in an international bowl in the Dallas, Texas, Dallas Cowboys Stadium. And I'm just so excited. And I want to tell him and Deacon Allen every Uber ride, every meal cost. Every flight, every phone call to my friends and my family, it was so worth it. God is good. Because this is something that not every young black man can participate in. And I want to thank our church for praying for us and keep praying for him. I believe that he is well on his way. And I tell you, I don't care how far I have to travel and my family travels with me. We're going to get to where God has him to be. I said, Jay, you have to believe. You have to want to be in the lead because everyone has traveled this track. And you have to believe that God has destined you to go to the NFL league. And that's what we are praying for. And I do believe, just based on the set us down for our pastor, amen. amen. I believe based on his faith and the relationship he's building with God, that he's going to go all the way. And I'm going to close with this. He told me one thing. He said, Miss Terry, when we were flying, he said, man, I can't believe you're helping me make one of my dreams come true. People and I put so much time and effort into everyone else's child. But I was determined that that week he was going to get everything that I had. And I was laid it down on the line. And I did it. Thank you so much, you Vision Christian Center. Continue to pray for us. We will have information if you would like to sponsor anything to help along the way. Continue to keep him covered in prayer. God, only God, could do that. He's a part of the elite athlete in the nation.
salvation. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, yes. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yes. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable perfect will of God. Yeah. I took from this scripture, which is one of my favorite, transform. When we come to God, we're being transformed. We are, are supposed to be a new creature in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, Lord, every day transform me. Mm -hmm. Every day transform me because you go through your TNT, which is my Sunday school knows, trials and tribulations. You go through everything. And I ask God daily to transform me. And I'm handed out to you. God gave it to me, and I'm giving it to you just to say to God every day, every minute, every hour, mm -hmm. Lord, right. transform me. Yeah. And Lord, to you can just birth along the service wherever you may be. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, heard him no children. And she had a hands made, a handmaid, thank you, sweetie. An Egyptian. Yeah. Whose name was Haggai. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold now the Lord had restrained me from bearing. I pray thee go to my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And April hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And Sarah, April's wife, took Haggai, her maid, the Egyptian. After Haggai had, I mean, after, I'm sorry, Haggai, her maid, the Egyptian, after April had dwelled in 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to be her, and gave her to her husband, Abel, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarah said unto Abel, my wrong be upon me. I have given my maid unto thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. And Abel said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarah dealt harshly with her, she fled from her face. 13th verse. And she called the name of the Lord and spoke unto her. Thou God seeth me. For she said, Have I also here looked up after him that seeth me? Go over this just a little bit more. All right. The name of my sermon is God Sees Me. Amen. Now Sarah, Abel's wife, buried him with no children. And she had a handmaid, a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Abba. And Sarah said unto Abel, Behold now. The Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her. Thou God seeth me. For she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? In other words, Hagar said, I have. I have seen the, the God who sees me. I have seen the God who sees me. We go through life questioning God, or second guessing ourselves, wondering if God will really do what He have, what we have asked of Him, or do He really hear my prayers, or can He hear me in the place where I am now? Sometimes the devil put thoughts in our minds and says, "What if God is not real? He doesn't hear your prayers." Or you have to get someone else to pray for you because he doesn't hear you. It's good to get you to get you not to believe in God by telling you lies. Sometimes we go through hard times in our lives that makes us question our walk with God. Have you ever got in water that was so deep? Or maybe you can't swim. You try to grab a hold of something solid enough that you can hold that will hold you up from drowning. You are in the water fighting for your life. Or someone gets in trouble with the law, real trouble. And someone says, and you say, can you really get me out of this? Or okay. uh, you get sick, I mean really sick. Or you lose your job. Or you, you lose your home. Or your car breaks down. Or your husband or your wife walks out on you. Or you don't have enough money to pay your bills. Or you, or you look over on a job for the promotion and you know that you are qualified for the job that you have been praying for. And you say, I knew it, that always happens to me. I can't win for losing. Or right, let's go to church. You are looked over or no one sees your gifts or shows you love. Are you seen to win? Are you say? I mean, are you seen? You when you are hurting, or no one sees you when you are hurting. 
I don't understand when you do talk to them about your pain. And you say, sure, they're not here. I spent that in the streets, but not in church. Then you say to God, Lord, you said you would never leave me nor forsake me. Deuteronomy 31 to 6. And I can't see you and I can't feel you. But this I can see. This is in my face and I can see it and I can feel it. It's snapping at me. So disappointment and fear is on every side. Then you say, God, can you hear me? Can you see me? Do you even care? Someone throws you a life preserver, but you don't trust that. It's not big enough. You are fighting for your life. The name Haggai means flight, strength, stranger, runaway. She was Abraham's concubine and the mother of his son, Ishmael. Haggai was purchased in Egypt. She served as a maid to Sarah, who gave her to Abraham to conceive in error. In other words, she was a slave. If Haggai had any children, they would have been Sarah's property. This was done without asking counsel of the Lord. Unbelief worked. God Almighty power was forgotten. In every, in every uh, relation or situation in life, there is some crosses for us to burn. Foul temptation, fleshly wisdom, puts us out of God's way. This would not be the case if we would ask counsel of God by prayer and, and by his word. Before we attempt this, which is doubtful. Hagar was a woman who never thought God would take notice of her. She wasn't important or wealthy or full of faith. Her only claim to flame, fame was that she ended up in the middle of a big, ugly, complicated mess. That God knew who she was. Hagar had a bad attitude and much of her mess was self-inflicted. Sarah, Hagar, Sarah and Hagar could see, could not seem to get along. Hagar was a servant and a servant girl, and she had lack of respect. Apparently at one time, Hagar was going to return to her relatives in Egypt. Hagar was evicted and unemployed. Hagar was impregnated by Abram and thrown aside by Sarah. Hagar was broken by the conspiracy between a husband and a barren woman. Hagar was hurting and helpless with no solution in sight. There was no alpha daughter to help her. Hagar was set up by Sarah and used by Abraham. Hagar fell out of favor with the woman who asked her for a sexual favor. But God called her by her name. Hagar was probably 18 or 19 years old. She is meant to be a servant mother for Sarah who would take the child as she as her own. This was not good news for Hagar. She did not want to sleep with, with an old man of 85 years old. Say it. <laughs> she had no choice. She had no, she had no choice, she had to do it. She also would have been the, the wet mother for the child, but the child was no longer her own. God will meet you where you end up at. And he will call you by your name. She was cast aside by Sarah and Abel as a nobody. But God knew her name. To God, Hagar was somebody. There are times when we may have a desert experience. Feeling pain and going through difficult times. In our lives filled with despair and hopeless. Feeling like God is not there. Or God is not hearing me. Or why me? Or why do I keep going around this mountain over and over again? Or I don't want to go through this again. Or you start feeling like you are alone and God is not here. So we go to the desert to die. But you're not alone. In 1 Kings 19 and 3, I, I mean, um, Elijah ran from Jezebel. You know Elijah, he's the one that made all of King Ahab's prophets, all 450 prophets, look like fools at Mount Camel. And there was Moses in Exodus 2, 11 and 15. When Moses killed an Egyptian for hurting a Hebrew, he knew, you know Moses, the one that fled from Pharaoh and 
lived in the land of Midian. And in Genesis, there is Jacob who fled from Esau because he tricked Isaac to bless him first. And then there's Haggai who ran away from Sarah because she thought that she was better than Sarah because Haggai got pregnant. And an attitude in her mouth got her in trouble. You, you may be down today, but God knows your name. You may be abused, refused, confused, depressed, oppressed, or come from a dysfunctional family. Family misunderstood a loner, have mental issues, or being used, or being looked over, but God still knows your name. In Psalms 139 and 8, it says, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. He knows you apart from any and everyone else. He knew you from your mother's womb. He knows your thoughts. He knows your deeds. He knows your hurts. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your sickness. He knows your circumstances. He knows your down sittings and your uprisings. He knows you today. God knows your name. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed you, you formed you in the womb. I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. It is amazing that God knows my name. But it wasn't until salvation when I knew his name. There is no name other greater. There is no name other name that's worth for me. There's no other name given whereby man can be saved. His name is saving. His name is a prayer endorser. He is a healing God. His name is Suvid. He has a Suvid name. His name is powerful. His name is a demon scaring name. His name is a delivering name. His name is a sin remitting name. His name is death conquering name. His name is present. He is a present refuge. His name is God-given. Uh -huh. yeah. His name is a praiseworthy name. Uh -huh. His name, he is the last uh -huh. of Adam. He's the mighty and the commander of the Lord. Uh -huh. He is the door. Yeah. He's the everlasting father. Uh -huh. He's the faithful witness. Yeah. And God all yeah. over. Yeah. He's the horn of salvation. Yeah. And the chosen one of God. Yeah. He's a defender. Uh -huh. And an altar has been hushed away because I know his name. His name is Lord of Glory. Lord God Almighty. Mighty God. The mighty one of Jacob. The one and only. Prince of Peace. My Redeemer. Resurrection of death. And he's the life and the root of Jesse. He's the shepherd and the overseer of souls. He's the son of the Most High God. He's the true man.
the leader. He is the light. He's the light of the world. He's the line of Jeff, the tribe of Judah. He's Lord of all. He's Lord of glory. Lord of righteousness. Lord of God Almighty. Lord God of the prophets. Mediator. Mighty one of Jacob. Mighty God. Morning star. Nazareth. One and only. One before us. Our Passover. Prince of Peace. The prophet. Ransom. Redeemer. Resurrection of life. Righteous one. He's the rock. Root of Jesse. Root of David. Root of no spring of David. Root of kings of the earth. Root of creation of God. Ruler of Israel, Savior, servant, shepherd of the overseer, of the soul, son of the most high. He's the son of man, son of man. He's my bread when I'm hungry. He's my food on my table. He's my God. Do you know him? Have we ever did anything for you? Do you know him for who he is? Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Set your side. But don't worry. He know who we he knows you. Honey. You're a nineteen. Fall down on me. It's your anointing. Thank you, Jesus. 